Hi everybody, this is JW from JW's Wrestling Memorabilia Blog, and we're back with another vlog. Uh, another, another vlog about press kits. Last time we looked at the press kits from WrestleManias 1 through 7. Uh, this time we're going through a plethora of different promotions and uh, time periods uh, with press kits from wrestling, and I think you'll enjoy a look at them all. Uh, just like the WrestleMania ones, you don't see these that often, so they are fun to take a look through, look at. Uh, through the items that came in them, as well as some things that are just associated with them. Um, so I will note uh, what's original to them and what's not. Um, I did some, uh, I've been doing some looking back at WrestleMania 4 lately, which is one of my favorite WrestleManias. Um, I often say that if you like WrestleMania 4, you have a friend in me. We weren't uh, an easy group to find up until a few years ago. But then this year, when the 34th uh, anniversary came through, social media was a buzz. People were admitting that they like it. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a great show. Um, does it appeal to everyone? No, but uh, those of us who love it, love it. Next year is the 35th anniversary, so I've been doing a little uh, looking around. I did find something that kind of goes with the, uh, the vlog last time. It's a photo. Uh, and if we can come out good here. And it is indeed uh, Vanna White and the late great Robin Leaf next to her uh, on WrestleMania 4 weekend at Trump Plaza. And if you see right in front of her there, that is the press kit. Now that isn't my, uh, the one that I have, uh, but it's cool to see it in its original environs as it were. Um, and like I said, I've been doing some, some research with uh, WrestleMania 4 and I've also been doing some some shopping, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately for my wallet, but, uh, and I have acquired a bunch more of the, the press photos, the promo photos. I, they're just, they're just awesome. Uh, you can see the tournament members. Um, I'm not gonna go through those because that was last time, but like I said, I do wanna do some things. Uh, it'll be next March uh, for the 35th anniversary. So that'll be probably on the blog and maybe we'll do a vlog or two as well, looking at some items. A lot of items from WrestleMania 4. A lot of fun stuff. Um, so we'll go through that uh, next year. But right now we're going to dive into the press kits that we're going to look at today. Uh, starting with the WWF. But this is going back to 1985. Right after WrestleMania 1. Uh, this is kind of a general marketing kit. Press kit. It's got the tri-fold. And you see all the wonderful items that we all remember items and shows, and Captain Lou and the Hulk and the LJNs and the wrestling album. Uh, so this is probably late 85, maybe even early 86, uh, since the album was released in November of 85. The magazine, Rock and Wrestling, Saturday Night's Main Event. And a lot of people who have commented on this on my socials, and it's popped up elsewhere. Uh, actually, I was looking through Instagram uh, recently, and I saw that it was featured on the Instagram account of a popular wrestling podcast. Uh, roll tide on that one. Uh, but the rumor and innuendo is, is that, uh, people were just gushing over these, uh, different tiered sheets here, because they did a little picture of each one in the description, and it goes over more of what we saw in the, uh, folder itself. These are a lot of the same photos. And I don't know if anyone uh, pointed this out, but we do actually have what very well possibly could have been the first mention of the, what we now know, for better or for worse, as the WWE Universe. Yes, it does say the WWF Universe. Of course, there it's mentioning all the different uh, licensees. Uh, Frito-Lay. Who knew? Uh, WWF International, you know where Vince was going. And of course, the ubiquitous station lineup, which appeared in many of these press kits, including another one we'll be seeing shortly from another promotion. Uh, the WWF TV Network. Remember when they used to say the WWF Television Network and you were kind of like, there's a network? They meant the network of shows. It wasn't like the WWE network that we know of. Well, we used to know here in America, and now we've got Peacock. But anyway, we're going to stay positive. Uh, Madison Avenue covers the WWF, and there you got the tops. The tops cards. And WWF, we make America's WrestleMania work for you. That was on the front, and here it is on the last page. 
You get LJNs and merchandise and the album and the cartoon and Mr. T and just all that good 80s stuff summarized. And you do get the original uh, Holly Hill Lane in Greenwich address for the headquarters before they made their move into Titan Tower, which the company, I believe, is going to be leaving in the next few years. So they were there quite a while, over 30 years. Next up, we have the whole bar. Uh, 1989, this press kit's from both the WWF and New Line Cinema. Some have seen versions that include the program, which was sold on newsstands. I have the program signed by Zeus. Uh, I have it, I've had it for years, so I have it separate, but uh, some I've seen be included. Um, you get some press releases. Parker Public Relations, production information. And you get a packet of promo photos. Glossies with Rip and Zeus. Another with Rip and Zeus. And the one you've all come to see is Miss Joan Severance. And they come in this thin uh, envelope, which I've seen in other movie press kits, but not really in the wrestling press kits. So that's an interesting uh, addition. You have to think that probably New Line put this out and not the WBF itself. Um, it just says I feel. Also, this did not was not included in it, but I can't resist, you know, showing it here. Um, this is a fold-out for the video videotape release. And it's interesting because this, of course, was released in 89. And 89 is when Batman was released. And that was the first one, of, if not one of the first. It may have been the first um, VHS movies to be priced to own. Because, in case you're a youngster and weren't around back then, VHSs were not originally priced to own, as you can see. Yeah, that was not priced to own. And there's the uh, artwork we're very familiar with from the VHS cover. And the bot bag, which I did see once. I don't know. And some um, uh, advertising uh, ads. Advertising ads, but uh, you know what I mean. Uh, that's no holds barred. And next up, we're going to 1993. Kind of a generic, but nice, uh, WWF folder. And this is indeed for the Lex Express. Call to action campaign. Do, of course, get press releases. But the photos here, again, are the highlight. Um, I've gotten a few of them signed. There's Lex Luger. As the narcissist, it doesn't say that, but we know when that photo's from. And then this one was, of course, a different shot from a shoot uh, that the shot came from that was used on the cover of WWF magazine. So he was flexing upwards on that one. And the infamous, in some circles, Lex Express promo photo. And finally, this photo did not come uh, included. Uh, this is Lex Luger. No kidding. Uh, in a go-kart at the Sandcastle Water Park, uh, right outside of Pittsburgh. And, uh, this photo came with this press kit because of who I obtained it from, who was Mark Madden, who was the, uh, Pittsburgh sportscaster and, of course, the, um, former WCW announcer. And uh, what he told me was that this was uh, a photo from the archives of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Uh, and he borrowed it, took it out, kind of like a lending library, for um, his column. And he never returned it. So he said, you own it now. Don't let them know. And I don't care because the Post-Gazette sucks. Uh, if they want it back, they can come after me. I really don't think they want a picture of Lex Luger. Uh, and yeah, they do suck. So, uh, there's that little, uh, tidbit from JWF regarding Pittsburgh media. 
And here we're going back to round 82, 83 for one of my favorites, uh, the AWA, the American Wrestling Association. And, you know, people rag on the AWA. Oh, they were behind the times. This is as nice as, almost as nice as the 1985 World Wrestling Federation press kit. It really is. I mean, it's 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 beautiful. It's, it's you know, you can see the sheen on it. Nice colors. Um, inside, the colors aren't as good. But um, certainly, you get the trifold again. There you have all the AWA luminaries as you remember them, of course. The big guy, Vern and Mean Gene and Roger Kent, Al Darusha, Wally Carbo, and Stanley Blackburn. And they do set these aside for a second. Go over, of course, the TV ratings, which who knows? You know, they could have been skewed to uh, in their favor. I'm sure they were, and they talk about them being featured in the magazines, the Western magazines, not the after mags, the Western mags, even Bill will tell you that. And they show some Japanese publications. This is, of course, before the Remco figures, or they'd be showing them here as well. And kind of like the 85 WWF, you get the tiered sheets. And there's the uh, different uh, advertisers on TV wrestling. And basically what they did was just uh, watch a bunch of TV and write down what products they were seeing advertised and put them on a sheet, like like dog food and uh, bread and convenience food stores. So that's what they did there, and they made a press release out of it. And, you know, it's, they, they show Andre with his fro, and they show Thunderlips. Hulk Hogan, they show some people we won't talk about. Uh... Yeah, and they show uh, Billy Robinson and Tito Santana, and they even get into the ladies and the the little people we used to call them midgets. Uh, but uh, equal opportunity wrestling with Wendy Richter and Joyce Grable and a good friend of mine, Judy Martin. I love Judy. And uh, Winona Littleheart, who recently passed away. And Debbie Combs, love Debbie Combs. Daughter of Cora. And, again, you know, you, you find things in these. And uh, this is a uh, half typewritten, half handwritten list from the St. Paul Civic Center of the ring announcer's payoffs. Looks like they may be between 100 and Three hundred dollars at times, and Wrestle Rock, Wrestle Rock, <clears throat> excuse me, Wrestle Rock eighty six. They got one hundred fifty dollars. I don't know. Was that Gary Capetta? It could have been. I, I can't remember at this point, but um, that's AWA. And we're going to WCW nineteen ninety four. How do we know it's nineteen ninety four? Well, the inside is how we know. That's very generic. It could be Mark Marrow. Trying to be bad. It looks kind of looks like him. I don't know. I see the frilly uh, tights. But um, we know it's 1994 because we're talking about Hulk. And we're talking about Bash at the Beach. And we're talking about Hulk Hogan and the wrestling boot beans. There's the Bash at the Beach. And we've got uh, Hulk holding a music executive while Jimmy Hart holds big gold. And we've got Hulk Hogan and the Wrestling Boot Band from the album that produced such hits as uh, I Want to Be a Hulkamaniac with uh, Linda McMahon and uh, Jimmy Hart. And I'm sure... Can I say Linda McMahon? Linda Hogan. And of course, Brother Brudai was hanging around somewhere. I love these guys. I love Brutus. But uh, here's a later WCW press folder. There's nothing in it. Um, so I'm not sure what kind of material would have originally been in it. But it's WCW late logo. I think they were still using this, this at the end. Another one of my favorites that doesn't, you just don't see is the uh, Pro Wrestling This Week press kit. If you don't remember Pro Wrestling this week, it was a syndicated show uh, hosted by a man named Joe Pettisino. He was from Atlanta, in the Atlanta area. 
Uh, later on, he hosted it with his wife, Bonnie Blackstone. But the original, maybe a year, year or two, was co-hosted by the Dean Gordon Soli. And uh, I obtained this one about a year or two after I met Joe Pettacino and Bonnie Blackstone. The only time I've met them, uh, Joe passed away uh, last year, I believe it was. Bonnie is still active on social media. She's they're very nice people. Uh, but I obtained this from, this was actually from the collection of Gordon Soli himself. And I obtained this from his daughter, Pam, wonderful woman. Lost touch with her. Uh, she seems to have disappeared in her online presence. So if someone knows her that's watching this, and you know, please tell her Josh says hello. She'll remember me, very nice lady. And uh, I treasure the Gordon items that I was able to get off of her. Um, some true, true pieces of memorabilia to celebrate Gordon. And there's the, um, I think I mentioned last time, a lot of these you see in the press folders, a little area for their, for the business cards. There is Joe Pettacino's business card. And Pro Wrestling This Week, you can, you can find episodes um, on YouTube. And they, it's very interesting. Uh, one I was just watching uh, had live coverage from the 1987 Slammies and Joe Pettacino interviewing Demolition and some of the other stars who were there, Billy Graham. Savage. And it's just interesting to see this show, which was not affiliated with the World Wrestling Federation, allowed that kind of access. And to hear Gordon Soli say the Slammy Awards, he wasn't there, but he's back in the studio. And to hear him, Gordon Soli say Slammy Awards is just weird. And if you've been watching as long as I have, you know why it's weird. It's just it's bizarre. Um, this one is in kind of a generic folder. I have no reason to believe that this isn't the original folder because it's almost sort of more like a collection of just press releases and some photos. Um, and they're not photos like the other ones have of the glossies. They're more of a thinner paper. You can kind of see right there. And this is a press release uh, announcing David McLean's formation of the Lady Sports Club TV series. And he does announce, he begins this by announcing that the powerful women of wrestling, Pow Inc., is dying. And he, uh, Mr. David McLean, mentions that he founded it. And it's pretty much a, uh, a slam piece on that promotion. And if you remember David McLean, uh, he started at Glow as well. And a lot of the names you'll remember from Glow uh, are in here. We're not going to show them all. There's a ton of things in here. Uh, there's David McLean from back when he was a fan in 1976 with Dick the Bruiser. And probably my favorite uh, to come out of the whole David McLean female empire um, is someone we all love. She's a wonderful person. Uh, I think she was in the Rumble this year. Yeah, she was. Um, the female Rumble, of course, and that's Tina Moretti, who is more popularly now known as Ivory. I, I just love her. She's wonderful. And uh, Magnificent Mimi, who many of us remember. Queen of the Bee movies. Uh, she's still very active on social media. And just a lot of the names that, you know, if you do, if you did watch those, those shows, you remember, let me show this one. This is a little thicker paper. David McLean with, um, Trudy Adams, the farmer's daughter, who you may remember, and Jackie Stallone, who recently passed away, uh, nearing 100 years old, and she was, um, the mother of Sylvester Stallone, of course. And this is an interesting one. Uh, I don't think it... It's the oohs and ahs of some of the other ones, but uh, certainly it's, it's rare, and uh, it's what we like to show. We like to show you what's out there, because no one talks about this stuff. Everybody's talking about figures, and woo-woo, you know. It's... Last but not least, this is the most recent one that I've obtained. Uh, and we're going back to the movies with another cross-collectible. Uh, it's the press kit from the original movie called The Wrestler from 1973. Not the Mickey Rourke movie. The Mickey Rourke movie is one of my favorite movies of all of all time. I love that movie. Um, people question how can you watch a depressing movie. To me, it's not depressing. It's a good story. Nevertheless, we're not talking about Mickey Rourke. We're talking about Ed Asner, Mr. Grant. Recently passed away. Um, also starring Vern Gagne, uh, Billy Robinson, superstar Billy Graham, Dusty Rhodes, and Dick Murdoch, who steal the movie in a bar fight scene. If you've never seen it, just seek out the bar fight scene. But so many 70s um, stars are in it that just, like, Vincent J. McMahon, the man we know as Vince Sr., he's in it. 
you can hear his voice, which he was not caught on film very often. So it, it's 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 worth going out of your way to see at least once. Um, and then it, again, it's more of a um, you do get the press the press releases, um, a TV wrestling guide, just like in the WWF and AWA. Get your TV shit where your channels will show the wrestling TV. Um, there's ads to um, order the trailer on film, of course. Um, and then you get a listing of the actor's odd job, Harold Sakata. He's in there, of course, from James, James Bond fame. Um, H.B. Haggerty, Hardboiled Haggerty, who was a uh, star of the 60s. Uh, he became an actor. He showed up on the Bob Newhart show, Adam 12. Um, and Chris Byrne, Byrne Gagne, uh, and uh, Lord James Beliers, Tally Ho, uh, The Bruiser and the Crusher, uh, Dick Murdoch and Dusty Rhodes. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool, um, movie. If you're a fan of 70s wrestling, you have to see it at least once. Um, the main event, The Wrestler, and I do have some other items from the movie, um, that aren't here, um, I do have a, I made a copy, a 4 by 6 copy of color of the poster at one point. I had to get it signed by Ed Asner and uh, Billy Robinson. I'm sure it's out there on my socials somewhere. You can go see it. And this is um, what most commonly came out for the movies. It's the um, newspaper ad mats. And, of course, these would be cut out and printed in the newspapers. And I'm not going to open it up. It opens up real big. But it's just interesting. Uh, there's Odd Job right there. Harold Sakata throwing his throwing his hat uh, at uh, James Bond, and this is just another fun one. Um, there it is, the wrestler. And of course, you know, there's there's many more press kits out there. Uh, I'm sure, some that I haven't seen that I don't know exist. I do have a few more um, from the Attitude Era. Um, I lived it. I enjoyed it then. It's not really my cup of tea now. Uh, maybe in a future vlog we'll show them. I do have them up in the socials, at least the front of them. They're very cool looking. Uh, just, I'm no longer enamored with the Attitude Era at all. Uh, but this is, you know, this is what I love, and I know a lot of you love it too. So that's why I like to share it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, we're going to do some more vlogs. I'm really having a good time doing them. Um, I can get into some things that I don't get to on the regular blog, the blog that started it all, uh, wrestlingmemorabilia.blogspot.com. Um, you know, if you follow me for a long time, you know I used to do it weekly. I haven't done it weekly for about two or three years now. Um, but I still try to update at least once a month. Um, again, there's other people doing it now. When I started the, the blog, you know, over a decade ago, in my newsletter 25 years ago, um, you know, no one was doing this stuff. No one was talking about this stuff. Now, again, you know, you have a, people doing a great job absolutely killing the wrestling fi I mean, killing it uh, with wrestling figures, and that's a great thing. That's why, you know, I occasionally review a new figure, but I like to do the old stuff. And you know what? When people tell me, they email me, text me, email me, run into me at shows, they say, you know, I like when you do the old stuff, when you show the vintage items, and that's what, I, that's what I'm going to do. Um, that doesn't mean I can't review a Mattel or two or whatever figure floats this way. So I want to thank you for watching. Um, again, wrestlingmemorabilia.blogspot.com. Um, also on all the socials, um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever we're. Uh, and, uh, I will be this, if you're watching this right after it's published, um, this, this weekend, this Saturday, I will be at the 80s Wrestling Con uh, in Morristown, New Jersey, uh, the Men in Sports Arena. I'll be there with some of my, some of my pals, and um, hey, you know, if you see me, if you want to say hi, please say hi. I always like to hear uh, from people who enjoy my, my content, my work, because I do, I put a lot into it, and I like to hear the people who are enjoying it, because that's what it's there for. It's there for information and entertainment. So again, that's the 80s Wrestling Con. I'm not giving them a, a plug. I'm paying to get in. Uh, but if you're going to be there, please say hi. You know. Um, and then I'm also going to be at the... Uh, we'll talk more about it. But I'm going to be at the Gathering 3 in Charlotte. Which is the um, spiritual successor, as it were, to the great NWA Fan Fest, which we all miss. Um, so again, thanks for watching. 
and we'll be back with another vlog and of course on the blog and all the socials. Thanks.